Hey everybody, this is A7X Fan Ben, and today I'm going to be doing what I think might be the first full video review of a Pirate CSG game piece. So I've got a bunch of tabs up here, I'm ready to go, hopefully, and uh, I'm going to be following the same format that Miniature Trading uses, um, possibly out of order a little bit. And the ship I'm going to be looking at today is the Serpent's Fang, which is actually one of my favorite cursed ships in the game. And I guess by extension, kind of one of my favorite ships overall, actually. Um, got some favoritism and a bit of bias towards her, but I think she's one of the most underrated ships, especially for the Cursed Faction. So let's just jump right into it right now with her stats and abilities. So this is a promo or limited edition from uh, the Frozen North set. Yeah, it's number 301. It's a Cursed Two-Masted Longship. It's 13 points, 4 cargo, L move. Both cannons are 3L, but they fire twice with longship, so almost like four 3L cannons in a way. The longship keyword, which gives you plus one to boarding rolls, um, you can row S um, instead of being derelict, and you get two shots per mass, of course, is the big one. And also, what makes it really interesting is it says if a sea monster begins its move within L of the ship, it gets plus L to its base move. And this flavor text you can read there if you want, and I'll include a link to the to the page here in the description below. But what I really like about this ship is it's kind of a weird flexible hybrid for the Cursed, and I think it's underrated um, because it's rare, so a lot of people probably don't have it, and because it can actually, that L booster, what I call an L booster for sea creature, or sea monsters, I should say, it's not all creatures, so titans can't benefit from it. It's basically just squids, sharks, and serpents. So those three types of sea creatures can benefit from the L booster. Um, so, going back to the miniature trading format, uh, how I would use it, like I said, a hybrid roll is actually pretty good, because if you put a captain and helmsman on the ship, you'll have 18 points, then you'll have LSB, two cargo spaces open, four 3L cannons shooting, essentially, and uh, that L booster, which I'll get into soon with more elaborate strategies. So I would generally use it as a hybrid and definitely a niche uh, ship to be used as part of Sea Monster Squadrons, which I'll get into uh, in bigger games like the ones I've played. I will admit, if you're playing mostly 40-point games or you can't you can't play more than 60 or 80 points, I wouldn't necessarily necessarily recommend using this ship, especially if you like the Curse. They do have better options, believe it or not. Um, but it's still one I would try to get a hold of, and the artwork is really cool too, which I'll go over at the end. And uh, strategies and gameplay, that's what I'll get into, get into with the combos. With strategies, it mostly revolves around the L booster ability, so you can jumpstart sea monsters out in front of the Serpent's Fang even while they're submerged. So it's really good as like a kind of like a Blitzkrieg type tactic where you have a brute force attack going far ahead of the rest of your fleet and far ahead of the Serpent's Fang. Um, and it can be pretty devastating. So combos with other miniatures, that's usually the bulk of what takes the time to write a review. And that's one thing I'm kind of experimenting here. Um, I want to see if I can do this probably in a lot shorter time than it would take me to write the review. So I'll go over crew first. So I would recommend a cabinet helmsman, totally necessary, because you've got solid cannons along with long shifts. There's no reason not to use those, you know, up to four 3L cannon shots. And then, of course, a helmsman. This, the base move is only L, so you need a helmsman to be competitive at all. So with that, it would be 18 points. You'd have two card spaces left over, and then LS speed. So then let's see what we can add from there. A cannoneer would be a reasonable option. Um, chain shot specialist, if you like that sort of thing. A lot of the cursed name crew are pretty expensive, so they're not going to be super relevant. This one is actually kind of interesting, this version of um, however you pronounce it. And he basically has kind of like an alternate cheerleader ability. So um, usually I don't like this ability. I think it's only worth one or two points. But in this case, the reason I like this ability right here is because you could shoot with a sea monster of some kind that you're comboing with the Serpent's Fang. And then the Serpent's Fang can come in from behind and then shoot afterwards. So this ability of being able to get plus one to kin rolls against the ship that was previously shot at that same turn is actually kind of a decent option and kind of a, I guess, a dark horse candidate for the Serpent's Fang, but there's still better options as I'll go over as I come upon them. Home Island rating, not really, not really worth trying out. Phantasma's too pricey. 
Um, the SAC version of El Phantasma is a really interesting case, though. He's got Captain and SAC, so you could put him, a Helmsman, and then I guess up to three Oarsmen, because the first the first one wouldn't take up space, and then the next two would, so then with Helmsman and Phantasma aboard, this version of him anyway, that would be uh, all four cargo spaces. So then you'd have the SAC ability with Captain shooting up to eight 3L shots per turn, and the key here is, though, you'd have three disposable oarsmen to feed to uh, to El Phantasma for extra actions. So then that would allow you to keep up with the sea monster that you're giving the L boost to. So that's actually important because with the L boosters, especially if you're using more than one, and that's one of my favorite tactics, is to like kind of shock an opponent with the speed by using two L boosters in the same fleet. So then the creatures that usually move L are moving L, L, L. Um, Especially on the first turn, they just jump out like a springboard on the first turn. It's pretty fun. But uh, this version of Phantasma is actually a pretty good option. There are better cursed ships to use them on, just kind of the big ones. The typical Ten Master, you know, Executioner, Grinder. Um, some of their typical, like, bread and butter, like, super effective ships would be better, I guess. But if you're using the Serpent's Fang, uh, the OE version of Phantasma is definitely one to consider. Um... The Rise of the Fiends version is decent too, so same action twice, Eternal, those would both be pretty good to keep up with the sea monsters, and then Eternal would be good for Longship because they're fragile, so she'll probably, the Servant's Fang could be, you know, she could be sunk pretty quickly, to be honest. She's not, she's not a durable ship by any means. It's more, it's all about getting the first strike, really, with the Servant's Fang first with the sea monsters, and then hopefully with the Servant's Fang's cannons to mop up uh, afterwards. So, either of these versions of Phantasma are great, just in general, and they're both pretty good for the Servant's Fang, too. Um, Firebot Specialist is okay. Um, rather have it on, like, a 2S cannon than a 3L, but it's not a bad idea. Uh, here we see an L Booster crew, the Hag of Tortuga from Rise of the Fiends. So, the Curse got another one, too, which I'll come upon. So, I think they got at least three uh, sources of this ability, so you could put the Hag of Tortuga on a ship that's running with the Serpent's Fang behind a sea monster squadron of two, three, four, five sea monsters, and then they, they get a double bonus, which can be pretty fun. So, Hag of Tortuga probably used on a ship that's kind of similar to the Serpent's Fang, maybe a hybrid or at least a ship that has decent speed, maybe the grinder with a captain, something like that. So you could you could combo with other L boosters, which I'll get to in the in the specific fleets that I've used the Serpent's Fang with. Looking down here, not a lot of great options. Musketeer, you've already got doubled shots with uh, with long ship keywords, so not a not a great idea. You could use navigators elsewhere in your curse fleet to give the sea monsters even more of a boost and to give the the serpent's fang a boost to keep up with the sea monsters. But I'm not a huge fan of navigators and trade currents, so it's not something I would do personally very much, if at all. But it's definitely an option to get the speed even higher, which is an effective tactic. So an oarsman, of course I talked about those. If you're using a sack captain, pretty much mandatory. Um, same with Skull, neither version is really needed or, or all that optimal here. Uh, Sargasso Nightmare, this is the other uh, curse crew that has the L booster ability. So if you combine Sargasso Nightmare on one ship and then you have the Hag of Tortuga on another ship and then the Serpent's Fang, you could get a triple L boost. So then let's say you use Kalim, which has SSS speed, which we'll see soon. That's a squid with triple S speeds. So then you could have speed of up to SSS plus LLL. So <laughs> you can really go crazy with this with enough points available, which, you know, most people don't play games above maybe 100 points, but, but it's fun to. I have the battle reports to back that up. Um, it can be a lot of fun. Stinkpot Specialist is actually a decent, decent idea. I've always liked Stink stuff in general. Um, you don't really need crew of other nationality. There might be a few niche cases where that would be useful, but I mean, this whole this whole idea of using a Sea Monster Squadron with L boosters is already a really expensive kind of gimmick strategy anyway. So uh, using other faction crew is just going to make it even more pricey. Uh, L Mover don't really need. And yeah, most of these other pro crew probably aren't going to be very useful at all. And yeah, I don't think any of them would be would be good for the Sermon's Fang. 
Especially because some of the name, the more expensive name crew would probably just be killed in action or whatever, or the Serpent's Fang would sink, and then they just go down with the ship. So, combos with other miniatures, though, usually crew are the most interesting, but in this case, the Serpent's Fang with the L booster, Sea Monsters might be the most interesting combo. And we see the first one here, this is just sorted alphabetically, it looks like. Uh, Behemoth is maybe the best Sea Monster, just because she can copy the Captain ability and others. So Behemoth is an amazing one. It's got L speed, so you could double that with the Serpent's Fang's ability. And uh, as long as you're close by, I should have gone into that more in detail. Maybe you have to be with an L of the sea monster, but but that's not that's not too bad of a restriction, actually. If it was S, it would be pretty pretty tight, but, but with L, it's pretty flexible. You just have to keep them all generally in the same location. So And it's okay if some of the sea monsters get bonuses on some turns and not on others. It's just inevitable. And, like, once you get in a combat situation, it's, everything's going to, like, explode and potentially fall apart anyway. So, and I will say this is a risky strategy to use the Sea Monster Squadron idea without boosters. Like I said, it's more of a extreme speed. Uh, it's like a Pokemon reference. Extreme speed, like, brute force, um, first strike, no matter what kind of tactic. And I'll show that in the, in the Battle Report fleet, too. So Behemoth is a great Sea Monster in general. And what's kind of crazy about Behemoth is you could conceivably copy the L booster ability to Behemoth, and then Behemoth could act as yet another L booster. Um, that kind of Behemoth's gonna fall behind in that case because Behemoth only has L speed. So if you're giving two boosts to another one, it's gonna be the Sea Monster getting the boosts is gonna be out of range real quick. But it's still kind of a amusing idea to try to get like four in one fleet. Um, there's a Mercenary Squid, but it's not particularly great. Kalim, like I talked about, really great speed. That makes it one of the better sea monsters. It also has some cargo if you're trying to steal gold in the unlikely other event that happens. And it, if it succeeds at a boarding party, it also eliminates a mask. So, so that's a good ability, especially because you'll be able to board and shoot, um, or at least ram and ram and board, I should say, if you get the first get the first strike, which you definitely will with Kalim, even without the L boosters. Kalim is fast enough to potentially get the first strike. Uh, Calypsos is a really good one to use here because it only has L speed, but if you're using at least one L booster, you can double that or triple that. So that becomes really dangerous here because it's got a good boarding ability and it has good cannons. So if you get you get you get up on that ship and then they if you got some tentacles left on the next turn, you can really use Calypsos uh, to great advantage here. So that's one of the great things about L boosters in general regardless of the Servant's Fang or if you use the crew, because the crew are more flexible, you can put them on a 10 master versus the Servant's Fang, you have to use that one ship. Um, and the other L boosters are more common too. Sargasso Nightmare is a common, from a common set, Davy Jones Curse. So if you're interested in this strategy, you could look into just getting Sargasso Nightmare as a start. You don't have to worry about the Servant's Fang. She's uh, more rare and pricier. And uh, like I said though, that's one of the greatest things about L boosters is that Sea monsters are generally slow by definition of their ship type, a lot of times at least, and they can't carry crew, so they can't carry helmsmen to boost their speed. So the L booster solves both those problems. So it's a, it's definitely, if you like the curse and you like sea creatures and sea monsters, this is definitely a gimmick you should try at some point, um, even if it's still not going to be super effective. So. Uh, Karcharodon is terrible. The sharks are just bad. I'm just going all o going over all the sea monsters because I just searched for that keyword in the database, and uh, so you, and you can use mixed nationality fleets. So you might as well the other options, but Champ Champ isn't very good either. So I'll focus on the cursed ones as much as possible. God Clockloth isn't as good as Calypso's in my opinion, but you have decent speed, decent cannons, and another boarding ability. So it's just really pricey at 19 points. So another option. A is worst in the game. Um, Intermediaro is more of a more of a bizarre niche creature. I wouldn't necessarily use this to attack, but the cannons aren't the tentacles aren't too bad, so you could still use that as an option. Uh, Jarmoon Gander is just boring and not too noteworthy, so not much to say about that one. Lechim Namad is good. This one has L speed, which you know could be boosted. And then 2S Tentacles and Reroll. So Lechim Namad is definitely a good one. Uh, Leviathan is another decent one. Good Cannons mostly is the main 
the main attribute here that you like. Other than that, it's kind of kind of boring, but Luska is terrible. Can't stand that one. Maxahebel, uh, I'm probably butchering half these pronunciations, but uh, Maxahebel is kind of interesting because it's got the reverse captain bully, so you could conceivably um, you could conceivably get an L booster and then hit the other ship and then um, shoot and then move away with the boost, maybe, to try to move away far out of range. Um, there's not a lot of benefits to that, because sea creatures, sea monsters, are generally just disposable, and you're probably not going to you're probably not going to use them after they've gotten into combat because they just go down, they're killed so quickly. Uh, Mistwalker is a really good one. So this one is only 14 points. It already has LL speed. So you can imagine even with just one booster, it becomes LLL, which is just wicked fast, especially for a sea monster. And then it's also, it's also got good cannons and the fog hopping ability. So Mistwalker is just fantastic. I will say, I thought about this a few days ago, um, the sea monster has to begin its move with an L of the ship, so you can't come out of a fog bank at that, at the boosted speed, so, because you can't target things in a fog bank with ranged target abilities, so that's just something to keep in mind so you don't uh, break the rules knowingly or unknowingly. Uh, Murgauer is just boring as hell. Uh, um, Ophidius is really good. But kind of a weird one. It's a pirate one. It's got kind of a funky negative ability. Still a really good sea monster, though. So Phidias is definitely one I would try to get a hold of if you like this this kind of idea and strategy and you like the sea monsters. Great speed and great cannons. So another good option. Seleucus is really interesting because it has like a micron-type ability. Give this monster a move action, but do not move it. Move any other sea monster instead. So you could conceivably, in a very high-point game, you could conceivably combine this with the L boosters to give a sea monster not only extra actions, but also boosted extra actions. So you could have speed boosters and, on top of that, a second action. The only problem with that is it's tough. You could give the second action any time during your, your turn, but it would still be tough to have the L boosters keep up with the, the sea monster that's going, like, wicked fast across the sea. So I have a niche little idea to try to, like, there's probably some some way you could try to max out a sea monster's like speed in like maybe like a hundred point game, give a restriction, that'd be a fun trivia question. Um Shai Hu Lude is a good mercenary sea monster, good speed and cannons. Slark Gubbit, not too good, not highly recommended. Um Fear from Underwater is uh is not too bad though. So Teach is another crappy shark. Tiamat is not too special. Tesoro is interesting, but mostly because of the ability. Um, so you're not going to be using Tesoro very much for like a combat, like an like a frontline combat role. She won't be as good as Leviathan, for example, or Kalim. So that wraps up the sea monsters, at least with that keyword. And uh, you can see there's a lot of good options to use with the Serpent's Fang. And uh, so I'm going to go to the next section, ways to counteract it. So. I would say mostly just shooting shooting first, which could be tough if you, you're facing the creatures first, because in, in an ideal strategy here, the monsters will hit you before the Serpent's Fang does, because they're beginning getting out in front of the fleet and smashing you before the L Booster, L Booster ships come along from behind. Um, but counteracting the Serpent's Fang, it's just two, two hits, and she's dismasted. So it's pretty simple. Um, I would try to capture her, maybe and or uh, cancel one of the two abilities. So you could cancel the booster, but once you get into combat, that probably won't be necessary, unless you have like a submerged sub somewhere canceling. But And then long ship, if you cancel that, that'll take out half the firepower, essentially. So mostly just think it though, pretty standard tactics for a small ship. It's not too hard to take out. Even two successful rams would take out the Serpent's Fang's um, firepower and some of her speed, so she will be able to row though, so you might want to stink her before she can, if she had a helmsman, she could row at S plus S and then still give the L booster to potentially multiple sea monsters, so just watch out for that. There's a longship keyword, and before I go into the next sections, it kind of wraps up the review. I'll, I'll show my fleets here that I've made with the Serpent's Fang involved in them, so I'm going to kind of take a look back at some of these fleets I've made. 
So El Cazador had a battleship fleet challenge with some restrictions, and I made a fleet for it. It's 85 points, and you can see um, the restrictions here. So you had to have um, a certain number of mass per ship, UT. Um, it was basically not a deathmatch fleet, but um, the idea was to use like battleship type things. So, and I think I had a second fleet for this challenge, but for 85 points, I wanted to do something different because um, I just like doing things kind of the opposite of what a, a lot of people like to do with making fleets. And I like to I like to change it up. I like to do something totally unexpected. So in this in this case, I included Namazu in the fleet, which is from Return to Savage Shores because that was legal for the challenge. And the main ability of Namazu, you may already know, gives the sea monster a shoot action, a wave S wide and two L long, leaves the sea monster in one direction. Up to two mass of every ship in the path of the wave are eliminated. Eliminate one of the sea monster's mass. So it's kind of like Neptune's trident almost in ability form. So it's really devastating. So that's what Max the Hebel is proxying for. That one's not in the fleet. And then Behemoth is copying Namazu's ability. So I have two like crazy suicidal um, sea monsters like blasting out these tidal waves preferably, you know, three or four per game at a minimum, just as much as possible when I get to the other ships. And then you can see the support behind these ships. Um, the grinder was a gold runner, I think. Um, and here's here's where the L boosters come into play. So I've got two of them. I have a submerged L booster. The locker has the Hag of Tortuga aboard along with the Helmsman. So the locker is moving LS behind the two sea monsters, Behemoth and Namazu. And then the Hag of Tortuga is giving an L boost, but of course, you know the Servant's Fang is in this fleet, or else I wouldn't be including it in the review. So Servant's Fang is moving in Ellis as well, and has the L booster built in. So Behemoth is moving. So basically the strategy is you move Behemoth the first turn, she moves LLL while submerged, and then you don't surface and use Namazu's tidal wave attack until you're right next to the enemy. So unless they have a canceller or some kind of... Uh, ability that hits submerged ships, Behemoth and Namazu are both going to stay submerged until they like suddenly pop up and just unleash these tidal wave attacks. So it's pretty devastating, and Namazu needs the boosting because she's only got um, S base move, which is as slow as it gets. So you need some kind of speed boost, and I've got that with two L boosters, so Namazu is going to be submerged but moving SLL. So Pretty impressive um, for 85 points. It was kind of a kind of a crazy fleet, but it actually won the fleet challenge. So El Cazador was impressed with it. So thank you for uh, for letting me win that challenge. And uh, it was definitely one of my more unique fleets, and really illustrates that L boosting can be devastating when paired with enough points, of course, to uh, pull it off. But also with supporting pieces like a submerged ship to keep. Um, to keep one of the L boosting crew safe, preferably, and when combined with uh, a devastating ability like Namazu copied to Behemoth to create this crazy like tidal wave chaos. So it's pretty fun. Um, I still have to use it. I definitely want to someday. And then the next one is uh, Monsters, Hoists, and Canoes, which is one of my favorite fleets I've made. Um, I'll put links to the description um, below. And yeah, this one is definitely one I want more votes and comments on. I think it's a really fun fleet. So the idea, um, basically, I did use this fleet and I won the game, mostly because the Sea Monster Squadron did what they were supposed to do. So there's so there's some canoes and a hoist that run gold, but that's all in the background. So at the forefront, and what is to completely distract your opponent, is this brutal combo, where once again I have two L boosters. So I have the Serpent's Fang with Phantasma, Sack Captain, uh, a couple of Oarsmen, Helmsman, and then supporting her will be the Nightmare, who has up to S plus S plus S speed with a Helmsman, and then Sargasso Nightmare, I'm using one of the L Booster crew. So those are the two L Boosters, and the creatures they're boosting are Calypso's Champ and Tiamat, and those are not nearly the best options. Um, Champ and Tiamat are pretty not even good sea monsters, so you could make this fleet even better. I think this is just based on what I had in my collection, my traveling collection at the time. So you can see 
how devastating this would be though. And the battle report, the picture links are broken, but you can still read the text and stuff. So, and I executed my strategy correct, correctly. So basically I sp sprang these three creatures, these three sea monsters out at high speed on the first turn and I zoomed across the map with those and then the Nightmare and Serpent's Fang right behind. So my opponent was suddenly hit with um, basically it looks like 13 tentacles worth of sea monster and eight shots or six masts worth of firepower pretty much all at the same time. So that totally occupied them and allowed my gold running to go uncontested in the background and um, and the hoist and the canoes and the sea monkey did their job gathering gold. So I ended up winning the game. So so basically I've been successful. I won a fleet challenge. I've won a game with this, the L Booster Sea Monster Squadron strategy. So it's it's for real a little bit more than most people think. It's still a gimmick. And against competitive fleets, it wouldn't it wouldn't do great. Um cancelers and other stuff would give it problems, but I think it's an underrated strategy. Again, if you like playing the cursed or playing with sea monsters and the fantastical side of things, um, I would definitely give this a shot. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, and being able to move sea monsters LL or LLL more than they normally can move faster, um, it's pretty fun and kind of can shock your opponent, especially if they're a veteran, but they don't, they haven't really like seen this used against them yet. So those are the two fleets I have with the Serpent's Fang, and I may make more eventually. And uh, the next one is Strengths or Pros. So we pretty much looked at that to some extent. The firepower is good. The cargo is good enough to be a hybrid or to have like a stack set up. You have enough room for some oarsmen. And of course, the biggest pro is pretty much the L booster, which is perfect for the faction because the cursed have the most sea monsters in the game. And they do have some decent ones like Kalim and Mistwalker and Behemoth that are and Namazu, of course, that are pretty good, pretty good to use, pretty effective, at least as far as sea monsters go. So the firepower, the cargo, and the ability are the main the main strengths. The longship keyword as well, of course. Um, the Vikings got some longships around this cost that are terrible. They got some one masters that are like 13, 14, or 12 points that are way worse than the Serpent's Fang. So weirdly, most of the non-Viking factions got the best longships. Um, not without exception, but weaknesses, mostly the base move and the fragility for the point cost. So you're spending six and a half points per mast, which is kind of a lot. You are getting, you know, good return on investment for those, for that expenditure though, because you get two shots per each of those masts, and then you get a nice ability that can pair well with what the curse have to offer. Um, so I guess the speed would be the biggest con or weakness, um, because it does make it somewhat difficult to keep up with the sea monsters, especially if you're using multiple boosters. So if you have two or three boosters in your fleet, um, the Serpent's Fang is going to fall behind unless you have one of those versions of the Phantasma. There's the SAC version and then the SAT version. So one of those would definitely be recommended if you're using more than one booster. But if the Serpent's Fang is the only booster, um, LS is, could be enough to keep up at least um, for a while. And that also depends on the setup. So if you have to like go all the way across the board just to reach your opponent, um, speed becomes more of a factor. So in that case, the Serpent's Fang might need some help from Navigator or extra actions. And artwork at Aesthetics. I actually love the artwork. Um, you can see the, the enlarged picture here. And I'll put, I'll probably make a thumbnail, because uh, I've used the Serpent's Fang a bunch in games, so I'll probably make a thumbnail um, of some of my games with the battle reports. And uh, it's got... Um, a serpent kind of reminds me of the basilisk from Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets on the main sail, the cursed main skull and crossbones on the on the gaff, and then just got an interesting figurehead as well. So I actually love the artwork. I think it's cool. And uh, Frozen North added some interesting artwork um, in general. So I'm definitely a fan of it. And then overall rating. So from 1 to 10, what would I rate this, this piece? Um, that's one of the tougher tougher parts of a review, especially relative to everything else. I would say maybe 7 or 7.5, just off the top of my head. Um, knowing what's out there that gets like 8, 9, and 10s, I don't think I can, I probably can't give her more than a 7 realistically, because she's very fragile. Um, it is a gimmick strategy with the L-boosting. If you don't use the L-boosting, it's kind of just a, 
kind of just a meh gunship. Um, but if you do use the L boosting and get kind of lucky with uh, boarding rolls from the creatures and stuff like that, it can be really beneficial. So I would say about a 7 out of 10. Um, you could make a case for 7.5. You could definitely make a case for lower too, though, 6, 6.5. I wouldn't really blame somebody if they rated this like a 6 out of 10 because um, there are some serious flaws. And uh, despite my, you know, one or two successes with it, the, the out-boosting Sea Monster Squadron strategy is really not something that's been tested very much, as far as I know. So it's it's a definitely an unproven strategy. So And it is more fun than uh, than purely effective, which, of course, is something I like to do after playing so many games. Um, sometimes I'd rather just have fun than try to win every time. So that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I'm going to put a link to this review by Xerix of the Dark Pact in the description. Um, I had it linked. For some reason, I can't remember why, but uh, it's another good 13-point curse ship. So check that out as well. And uh, I might try to put this on MT, but I'm not sure yet. I'll at least leave a link in a thread somewhere. So, And I'll include some links below if you want to check out more about the Sermon's Fang, the fleets I've used it in, and battle reports, stuff like that. So that concludes my first uh, review, video review, and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want me to do more. I do have a lot of different pieces lined up to review. I just, there's just a lot of other things I'd rather do and videos I'd rather make. But if you would like to see more video reviews from me, or if you prefer text, please uh, comment below and I'll take that into account. So that pretty much concludes it. So Serpent's Fang, about a 7 out of 10. Great artwork, really fun, uh, highly recommended for cursed players uh, or people that like sea monsters in general, and definitely a strategy and a ship that I would recommend trying out. So thanks for watching. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like, and uh, I'll see you again soon for more videos. So thanks for watching.